Hi everyone and welcome, I'm Izzy at Minerva. Today I'm looking at how to fit this gorgeous dress here, which is one of our Minerva exclusive patterns and it's the Savannah dress. This pattern is size inclusive and comes with two pattern cup sizes, which is fantastic. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk you through how to measure your body, how to then relate that to understanding which pattern size to cut. And if you need to grade between sizes, as in some parts of your body are a different size to other parts, I'm gonna demonstrate how to adapt the pattern pieces to do that. In addition, I'm then gonna talk you through just a couple of standard fit alterations that you may find really helpful for this garment. One of them will be the shoulder alignment up here, and the other one is going to be if you've got a bit of a gapping neckline up here, as in it's just a bit too loose around the front, but everything else is fitting really nicely. I'm also going to demonstrate how to lengthen and shorten the pattern pieces and exactly where to do that on the pattern in relation to if you are taller or shorter than the pattern that's been designed for. In today's video, I am wearing the Chalk and Notch Wren blouse and you can purchase that pattern on our website. We'll link it below the video. Now this video is solely focusing on just how to fit and cut the right size of your pattern piece and how to make common adjustments. We have some fantastic videos that relate to this Savannah dress sewing pattern and we have a um, fabric recommendation video, so go and check that out. And we also have a sew along as well, which talks you through step-by-step -step how to actually sew the pattern in addition to the lovely little printed booklet that we have here for you as well. So there's lots of extra support should you need it using those two video links and we'll link them below the video for you too. So we have our pattern booklet here and inside we've obviously got a really helpful information here about the pattern description through to the sewing guide and the sewing instructions. The main bits we're looking at are the fitting guide and the sizing and fabric charts today. So here's, this is where we start with the fitting guide. There's some advice here on how to take your body measurements, but let's go and do that now together. For this pattern, we need four body measurements. Our first one is our high bust measurement. So grab your tape measure, pop it around the top of your bust up here, underneath your arms, nice and snug, and it should be in a reasonably straight line around your back like that. Just make sure that you can fit two fingers between your body and the tape measure. Big breath in, hand out again, and take that reading. Our next measurement is around our full bust. So this is the widest part of our bust as it goes around our body, making sure again, the tape measure is nice and straight around the back and that you can fit two fingers between yourself and the tape measure. Take a big breath in, hand out, and then take that reading. For your waist measurement, you want to find the point between your bust and your hip bone. <laughs> that is where the break of your body is. So basically, if you put your hands on your, just above your hips, bend to one side, you should feel where the natural break of your body is at that point. It's often higher than our trousers, as you can see on me today. Um, it is just a little bit higher than how we often wear our clothes. So don't be put off by that. It is higher than you might think. So just find out where that break is. Put two fingers between yourself and the tape measure. Big breath in, hand out again. And there we have it. For our hip measurement, we want to put the tape measure around our widest part from our waist down to the floor. Most people, our hip measurement will be about 20 centimeters below our natural waist. This is a straight measurement that just should just go straight all the way around. And when you take it, you want to make sure that you can wiggle that tape measure up and down over your body, um, nice and snug at your widest part. So have a little play around with the way you think that is, and then take a nice measurement all the way around. Just want to take another quick look at the ease of the pattern. So it does say here that it's a sort of a flattering fit, uh, but that it's got quite a lot of ease in it. It says there's approximately 15 centimeters ease at the bust and about 28 centimeters of ease at the waist and 15 centimeters of ease at the hips. Now what that does is you can see the silhouette of the woman, the woman's shape or the block that's been used to create the pattern. You can see that underneath the uh, pattern pieces down here. And what that does is it just gives you an idea of sort of how the fit has been designed uh, for this pattern. So there is a lot of ease here. And if you prefer a tighter fit, you may just want to review that um, and actually size down potentially depending on what type of fit you want. So in terms of here, all of this then becomes ease, it's like extra fabric 
all the way around the waist and the hips and the same on this side too. So you can see we have got quite a lot of like excess volume, which is good because also the pattern has been de designed for stretchy fabrics. So you've got a lot of ease and it's going to be a really comfortable garment to wear. Okay, so now let's look at how to actually pick our pattern size based on our own body measurements. I've got an example set of body measurements in front of me here. And all I'm going to do is just see which box my measurements fit into on this section up here, which is our body measurement chart. Now you'll notice that we've got the misses size A to J and that we've got the women's size K to T. This one, the larger pattern size range has a pattern cup size D and this one has a pattern cup size B. All that means is that the difference between the high bust and the full bust for the misses size, which is a cup size B, is five centimeters. And the difference between the high bust and the bust for the larger pattern sizes has a 10 centimeter ease between the bust and the full bust. So I'm looking at these body measurements right here. I can see the high bust is 98. So a high bust measurement here could fit into 98, which is here, which is in our misses size but actually it could also fit in to L here on the larger pattern sizes. So either of those would be fine for a high bust, but what I'm now interested in seeing is what the measurement of my full bust is to determine if I need the D cup or the B cup pattern size. So I know that I'm either gonna want a pattern size L to match my high bust measurement of 98, or I'm going to want an I, which is the high bust measurement corresponding with the smaller misses size. Now my full bust here in this example is 111 centimeters. So if I then drop down and the next size on the chart, on the misses, the bust measurement that the misses pattern size, size I has been designed for is only 102. That's not big enough for this example. So that's because the difference between my high bust and my full bust is 13 centimeters. That means I need to be only looking at this size chart here because I need a pattern D cut pattern size. And as you can see, if I follow the column in L, it fits my high bust nicely at 99. I'm 98, which is very close. And the bust is 109, which is nice and close to 111. It's only two centimeters out. So that's gonna fit really beautifully. So let's just note that we're gonna be cutting pattern piece L for the full bust and high bust. When it comes to the waist, waist is coming in at 102, which sits me sort of in between M and N. N is 104, M is 99. I'm sitting closer to 99 than I am to 104, so I'm gonna cut the M pattern size. And then hips are coming in at 125 centimeters, which drops me closer to the N box down here. So actually in this example, I'm gonna grade between a bust of a size L, a waist of an M, and a hip of an N for November. <laughs> So now we have our pattern sizes that we know we need to cut. I'm just gonna give you a little demo on how to grade between the sizes. First of all, let's find out and mark on the pattern pieces where our bust, waist, and hips are. So our hips are around this notch here, and this is our front pattern piece here. Now we know that our waist is usually on average about 20 centimeters above our hip line, so you can see that 20 centimeter mark hits really nicely with this notch here. And then on this pattern piece, the bust line is here. So starting at the hips, we want to follow size N at the hip line. So the hip line, this is where I want to be. By the time I hit the waist line, I am cutting a size M, which is this little dotted line here. So that's where I want to be by the waist. And then by the time I hit the bust, I am a size L on this example. So it's this second line in that I want to grade from. So we know from the bust upwards, we just want to be an L. So grab a nice colorful pen and just trace along that line because that's really nice and easy uh, to trace up to. Now, the next thing we want to do is grade from the bust to the waist. So our bust line is one line um, in from our waistline. So grab your pattern drafting ruler 
And if this was a straight line, we'd literally just join the two up like that. But because it's on a curve, let's just find a nice curve that sort of honors that shape that we've got here. So something like that. Yeah, so we're just grading and the line cuts in between the two and by the time it hits the waist, it's following the correct size of the waistline. Now the next thing that we want to do is grade between the waist and the hips, but we do have a little bit of a complex scenario here because we've got the pocket opening. So from the waist up, we sort of want to be around the waist. I would just follow that line up to that point there. And then I just find another nice soft curve that's going to join that point up to our waist, just like that. And then obviously from the hips down, we just continue along that line all the way down to the bottom. Follow the hip line straight across. Now on pattern piece B, it's gonna be cut on the fold. So, and actually on, on this side, the grading lines are all sort of staggered, aren't they? So if you have a look at this, we've got all of our grading lines are staggered along the center front. So I'm just gonna follow my largest size in a nice straight line all the way up. It is much easier to size down than to size up when we're fitting the pattern. Okay, so there we have it. We've got one size at the bust. We've then graded up to the waist and then graded up again to the hips. That process is the exact same one you need to duplicate for all of your pattern pieces. You need to know where your notches are or for your hip, bust and waist. And then you can just join up those lines and create your new pattern piece bespoke to your body measurements. If we just take a quick look at the front piece here, I know that this notch is gonna tie in with that notch. You can see it's gonna tie in beautifully and that's a nice little reference. So at this point, this will be my waist notch and this will be my bust. So then you can just grade down waist to bust. By the time it hits down the bottom down here, it's lining up with this point here and then that will be the hip line down here. So by the time you hit down the bottom, you're going to want to be whatever size you need to be for your hip. Let's move on to the pocket and the neckband. So the pocket pattern piece, it would be the waist up at the top up here. And by the time you hit this point, it's your hip. For the armband, that's obviously just going to follow your bust because that's going to be from, you know, from your bust up is just your bust size, so including your sleeve. And then looking at the second page, this is the back pattern piece. This is going to be where our hip needs to be. And the double notch here will be our waist and this will be effectively our bust line. Moving on to the side back pattern piece, you can see this double notch will be our bust, and this one down here will be our waist. By the time you obviously hit down here, you're looking at grading into your hip line. And then the neckband is obviously just going to follow the bust, and obviously the pocket opening fusing is just one pattern piece for all sizes. Okay, and that very simply is how you grade your pattern pieces for the Savannah dress. Okay, we're going to look at lengthening and shortening the pattern next. Now, as mentioned at the very beginning of the video, the pattern is designed for someone of a height of five foot six, which is a very average height. So that's 167 centimeters in total. If you know that uh, this is a common adjustment, if you're taller than that or shorter than that, you may well want to lengthen or shorten the whole of the garment um, in total. And I'm gonna show you how to do that now. And the other reason why you might want to lengthen and shorten the pattern piece is if you know that your upper body, so your torso, is longer than the average or shorter than the average pattern is drafted for. And in that case, you're also going to, going to want to lengthen and shorten. What I'm gonna suggest is that we lengthen and shorten it uh, between the bust and the waistline where that torso length is there, but you could also lengthen and shorten it below the hip line if, it, if you're happy with the fit from the waist up and you just want to literally just sort of lower the hem um, to make it sit at your knees or just above your knee, which is where the pattern is drafted to sit. Okay, so whatever we do to the front, we also need to do to the back in terms of lengthening or shortening the pattern pieces. And very simply, I'm gonna start off with the front pattern pieces. You can see how they're going to align like that now. So we've got our bust and our waistline down here. So really what I'm wanting to do is put a lengthen and shorten line in between the waist and the bust. I want to do that at a point which is easy to reference. And for this particular pattern piece here, I want to just mark off exactly where this notch is. Just draw a little line across. And then I'm just gonna offset a line which is just four centimeters above that notch line. 
this is going to become my cut line. The reason why I've been so specific with that cut line is because I want to make sure that I'm lengthening and shortening it at exactly the same point at this point here. So I've obviously got my waist notch here. So if I repeat that whole process, I can effectively bring on down this grain line straight down and that helps show me where my perpendicular line needs to be. Draw a line from that notch, which is what we did before, straight across and then offset a line from there at four centimeters. Okay, so what that's done is it's made sure that at the four centimeters above that notch, we've then got a cut line at the same point across the front. Now at this point, I'm just gonna cut along those two cut lines and then we're going to increase the length of the pattern piece. I'm gonna get a new sheet of paper and I'm going to assume that I want to increase the length of my garment by three centimeters. So I'm literally just gonna start off by drawing a line that is two parallel lines actually that are three centimeters uh, distance apart from each other. Now for you at home, the distance you want to lengthen or uh, decrease it by uh, will vary depending on your body size. Now I'm gonna line up this first pattern piece to make sure that it is sitting nice and straight along this line here. And we're just gonna stick that down in place. Getting the top pattern piece, I'm just going to line that up again, making sure it's nice and sitting flat along that line. I want the center front line to remain completely straight across both pattern pieces. Now, what you're gonna notice here is that we have a bit of a zigzag <laughs> here, a bit of a, it's not lining up at all at that point. That's fine, don't worry about that. We'll deal with that in a minute. Now, the next pattern pieces that we want to line up, which are these two here, we're just gonna do the same process at this point. Okay, so we've now got our two pattern pieces. They're looking, um, <laughs> they just really need significant sort of truing up at this point, do they? We've dropped down, but we were on a curve. So let's just find a nice soft curve between the two that's gonna sit like really comfortably. So I'm gonna try and um, basically grade now between my bust and the point down here. So I'm getting a nice soft curve. It feels like it needs that amount of space. That's my new curve there. And then if I do the same on this side, you can see that whatever I've taken away from one pattern piece, so what I'm gonna be cutting out of the main pattern piece, I'm adding into the side. So the overall effect is that we've not changed the volume of the pattern piece at all. We've just made sure that the, um, the design and the aesthetic of it is still gonna create a nice smooth curve from the top all the way down to the bottom. So what we end up with is something that looks like this, where we've increased our volume of our length of our garment at exactly the same point across all the front pattern pieces. And then very simply, we just want to repeat that whole process for the back pattern pieces, E and F. So we've put the cut line at five centimeters above the waistline, and we've simply just cut along there and added three centimeters in. We've curved off this seam and that one, and then also just trued up this side down here, which is our side seam. So that then resolves how to lengthen or shorten your piece. In this demo, we showed you how to lengthen it. The same principles apply for reducing the length of the bodice. So you can use the same cut line and then just literally move the pattern piece instead of down. You can just move it actively like that and then redraw in your curve in the same way as we did before. Now, let's also not forget that if you're wanting to lengthen the skirt aspect here, it's not quite hitting at your knee, which is where the pattern wants to be hitting just above your knee for this pattern piece. You could also do a cut line along here and um, between the hips and the hem and just push that all down again. It's completely up to you. Have a little play. Don't forget that we always recommend that you do a practice first just to check the fit. Make sure you're really happy with it before you make the final garment. One common fit alteration that we'd really love to show you in today's video is how to resolve the issue if you have a bit of a loose neckline up here. So it could be that it's not just the neck band that's loose, but we've got excess volume in this area right here. The first thing to do is that you want to pin it out evenly along this seam here. So I'm just going to pin it really carefully at that point. So I'm gonna pop one on one side and then pin it on the other side up at the neckline just to take out that excess volume.
So you can see that sitting a lot nicer and a lot flatter already. I'm just going to continue to pin it on both sides, nice and evenly. Okay, and there we have it, very simple. All you need to do now is just remove the volume from that pattern piece right there. Let's do that together now. For this alteration, we're going to need basically our front pattern pieces. So front pattern piece B, C, and then also our neck band. We're gonna pop the neck band to one side just for now. So our top is here and we've pinned out on both side seams equally the same amount of fabric uh, depending on how much you need to pin out, this will vary. First off, let's just mark where our seam allowances are on the pattern piece. Next, let's bring across our pattern piece and see how much volume we've removed. So up at the neckline, up here, let's just take a little measurement of the distance that we need to remove from both sides. For me, it's 1.5 centimetres. So that junction up here is basically where the, um, the top is up here. I need to move and offset it by 1.5 centimetres. That's how much I've removed. So lining up my ruler with this seam here, where it hits that line there, that's where it needs to come into. And the same on the other side, because obviously we've pinched it out of both sides. The next thing to do is just to measure at what point does the amount that we need to remove uh, just stop. So how long is that dart effectively that we've drawn in? Measure it from the seam allowance here. For me it's about 10 centimetres. So measuring from the dot on the pattern piece up here on B, just mark a point along the seam allowance that's 10 centimetres away from that circle. And again, up here, 10 centimetres away down the seam line. Okay, great. So let's just draw those lines in. So now we've got our new stitch line on both of the two pattern pieces, but we've got a bit of an angle, it's a little bit sharp there. I'm not particularly happy with that. <laughs> so I just want to find a nice soft curve um, that's just gonna help me sort of join those up because this curve here is a nice soft curve. So let's just find something which is gonna match in really nicely. And the same for the other side. Brilliant. Once you're happy with those sort of curves, just mark in your seam allowance now. And then just trim off that excess volume. So we've adjusted the two front panel pieces, which is wonderful. What we now need to do is make sure the neckline is gonna sit nice and flush against um, the top. So we need to reduce the length of the neckline. The neckband pattern piece is cut on the fold, which means we've only got half of the neck on the pattern piece, which means that the neckband sort of starts here and finishes at the center back down here. So we only need to look at the volume that we've removed from one half of the front in order to update this pattern piece. So here we've removed, for me in this example, three centimeters in total. Now the neck band has been drafted to be 90% of the circumference of the neck line when all the panel pieces are put together. So what that means is if we want to remove three centimeters, for me it's three here, for you it'll be something different, Whatever you want to remove out of here, you need to times that by 90% in order to ensure you get the correct reduction on this pattern piece here. So for me, I removed three centimeters. So I'm gonna take my calculator, tap three into the calculator and times that by 0.9. That then tells me the exact amount I want to remove from this pattern piece. For me, it's 2.7 centimeters. Now, on this pattern piece, you can see we've got the center front here, which corresponds with this. We've then got a notch here, which is gonna correspond with our shoulder notch and our shoulder seam up here. Our center back is then around the back of the garment over here. The amount that I've removed and the location that I've removed is between the shoulder seam and the center front. So we're actually going to remove our 2.7 or whatever amount you need to from this section here. So I'm just going to draw a line that's parallel to the grain line in the center front, and then I'm gonna draw a line that's offset by 2.7 centimeters. We can then cut out that amount from the pattern piece, and then just stick that together. 
And really, that's all you need to do in order to uh, sort out your neckline if it's just a little bit too big and it's just gapping a little bit too much for you. Okay, our next adjustment that's really common is just looking at where the shoulder line is gonna sit on our body. We want our shoulder seam, which is here, to sit beautifully on our shoulder line, which is here. You need to know where your shoulder line is before you can make this adjustment. It's basically at the top of the curve of your shoulder and then it goes straight into your neck following along the top of your shoulder, so the highest point of your shoulder. It should be pretty obvious when you look at it in a mirror, someone should be able to mark it on the pattern piece. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here on my little model. I want to assume that my new shoulder line is just sitting too far back and I want it to follow that contour. I am going to pin that out nice and neatly and then transfer those line markings onto our pattern piece. So there we have it. You can see the new shoulder seam line is going to follow those pins and it is now in line with the shoulder line of the model here. So all I'm going to do is take this seam allowance here and just shift it along a little bit so that it's sitting in the right place on her shoulder. Let's take a look at how to do that together. Okay, so for this alteration, we need two pattern pieces which have the shoulders on them and that's the front side C and the back side E. Okay, so here's our pattern piece and what we can see is that we want our shoulder line, which is currently here, to run where the pins are. So we want to move the shoulder seam so it's closer to the front, which means that on the front pattern piece, this line here is just going to rotate in so that it's bringing the seam line in closer. And then on the back pattern piece, we're just going to add in the extra bit of fabric that we need to bring that seam across and move it over to there. There are a few different ways we could do this. Um, what we're going to do is just, I'm just going to demo one method for you now. I'm going to start by working on the front piece. Draw in your stitch line. So this dashed line demonstrates where our current stitch line is around the neckline, which is here, and then across. To start off with, I want us just to measure where that pin hits the neckline. So for me, that's two centimeters. Whatever that distance is, I'm just going to mark it down from the junction here, which is that seam there, down onto the neckline. I'm using a different colored pen for this. And then I can see here that then it joins up at that point at the base of the seam down here. It's joining back up again with the arm side. So that is by the time it hits this junction here, that's where it ties back in again. Now very simply, we're just gonna grab our pattern drafting ruler and currently you can see that this seam is sort of sewn on a curve, isn't it? Actually it follows that line really quite nicely. It's kind of following that line there. So we don't want to draw a straight line because drawing a straight line between those two points actually doesn't reflect what's happening. The offset needs to be on a nice soft curve, something like that. So find a curve that you're happy with and then just draw in your new seam line. Then just offset your seam allowance from your new seam line. And then cut that excess paper off. So now we've successfully moved uh, our seam line down, down to there. We now need to add this amount of fabric onto here. Effectively, all we really want to do is just flip that over and add it onto this side here. Tape that down and then that is all that we need to do. And that is how you adjust your shoulder line should you need to for this pattern. So thank you for joining me today as we've looked at how to fit this beautiful Savannah dress sewing pattern. Hope you've really enjoyed that, it's been really helpful and you absolutely love sewing up your own version to fit you beautifully. I've been Izzy Minova and I'll see you next time.